And that's why some guys like low test, high primo and vice versa. High test, a little bit of primo or a little bit of train to get this favorable protein expression for them. Because again, the protein metabolism downstream is going to be different for everybody as well. Yeah, because how many uh, polymorphisms are there for the androgen receptor? Uh, 60, 70? Now, I thought over a thousand. Really? Uh, there's what, hmm. there's over was... a thousand known polymorphisms as, that I'm aware of. Okay. So yeah, if, if that can all be indexed and then use AI to design a compound <laughs> to <laughs> only interact with the uh, the ones on the skeletal muscle. Yeah. No, but it does make a lot of sense that slowly, you know, piecing the scientific evidence together that, that again, we're ultimately after response on the DNA. Yeah, not how the relative binding affinity is just an interesting number. Yeah, or like the uh, anabolic to androgen. Like yeah. nandrolone binds more firmly than testosterone, but is is what's occurring in the nucleus any better than testosterone? I would say exactly. That. Yeah, it's irrelevant. And and of course, if you're using testosterone and nandrolone together, the testosterone has a certain domain where it binds to, mm -hmm. and that might overlap with the nandrolone, but nandrolone might overlap with other domains that testosterone doesn't overlap or bind yep. to. And then the synergy between these two compounds. And then it's about finding your individual co cocktail so you can get the best of both domains in individual ratio regarding protein expression that works for you. And that's why some guys like low test, high primo, and vice versa. High test, a little bit of primo or a little bit of train to get this favorable um, protein expression for them. Uh, because again, the protein metabolism downstream is going to be different for everybody as well. Uh, and that that might take a while to figure out. Now, maybe with a DNA test, you can figure it out more. With the GAC repeat test that Merrick Health offers, you can they figure just, it out more. They just sent me one. All right, yeah. so you're going to do it. Okay, perfect. It just came today. Cool, perfect, perfect. Let us know what your results are. Um, I'm still trying to figure out a way to get it here. <laughs> oh, Unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, it's, sending the shit to Thailand is a nightmare, man. I mean, even um, covering, covering from that, if we can do... A genome sequencing or like a, an isotope tracer into like an isotope traced steroid ah, you yeah. could you could try and track the genes that are switched on from primabol and the genes that are switched on with mastron um i think one of the other things that it, it suggested was you could do an assay to um profile those co-activators between the two so again, we're seeing what co-activators are being expressed or initiated from Prima Bowl or Mastron. But I, I think moving forward, there might be, you know, some more questions to ask beyond just the androgen receptor and going more so into the DNA. Mm -hmm. And even then someone's DNA, depending on their chromatin structure or the histone and the acetylation of the histones, certain people's genetic responses from a DNA perspective could be completely different, which again adds why someone might say, oh, Mastron get me more anabolism than Primabol. And they're, the shape of how their chromatin has been uh, wound together, if you want to put that way, with histones and acetylation, you might not be able to dock correctly in with something like Primabol versus Mastron. So I think there's a lot more complex questions to be asked that yeah anecdotally we we all have observed prima bolum being the more potent of the two but then the other hypothesis that chat gpt even came up with was well prima bolum probably lowers shbg a lot lower than mastron so now your testosterone is staying more free which mm -hmm. now you're enhancing your ability of your own I'm not going to say your own, your testosterone base that you're using to work more effectively in the cycle, which again will have a known effect on your gene transcription. Yeah, and then it converts to estradiol and DHT, which might have some overlapping effect regarding your, uh, you know, DNA uh, transcription. Uh, the, uh, DHT is said to be not very anabolic, but I'm sure in combination with real anabolics, it elicits some sort of additional response. That's why some people swear by injectable DHT, right? I know some some of them <laughs> reached out to you guys as well. <laughs> you want to buy some DHT in a day, bro? <laughs> so, 
I, I think in the end, it just depends on individual response and you have to try what works for you. Uh, and you don't have to be all in, uh, exclusive. Like for me, Masteron is purely a cosmetic enhancing drug. It doesn't really do much anabolism wise and literally, unless I really go to 2000 milligrams a week, which I have no intention to do. That's fucking 10, 10 milliliters per week. I'd rather run 10 milliliters per mil uh, at a hundred milligrams per mil. And, and it's probably cheaper also than 200 milligrams per mil of Masteron in a date. And then you also got to think about the molecular difference, because if you compare uh, methanolone anatate versus drostinolone anatate, with methanolone, you get more molecules. Mm -hmm. If you both do 100 milligrams per milliliter. So these, these things also got a factor. What is a 10% difference in molecules? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's huge. It was like six, 60 trillion, it's, billion yeah, or something. Yeah. We, we looked at it that, you know, even on the surface, this was someone said to me before about two and a half milligrams of Anavar for a mm -hmm. woman. And it's like, again, it's in the trillion billion molecule number. And you're like two milligram, 2.5 milligram looks like a small number weight wise. But, but it's when you look at it zeros, right? baby. <laughs> yeah. You know, you look at how many molecules it is. How confident would you be taking that many molecules of cyanide into your body? It's only two milligrams of cyanide, man. Like, you know, the the weight has got nothing to do with the number. You take a higher weight because it has more molecules. Two milligrams molecules, of clen. You know, like, mm. it's oh yeah, two milligrams of clen. Good luck. <laughs> it's 20 micrograms already too much. Uh, Jesus Christ. Like, I think when we're when we're looking at even that that compare comparison between the number of molecules in a, a standard dose that's even where it becomes complex of like someone's trying to compare 100 milligrams of primo to 100 milligrams of mastron primo has already trillion billion more molecules that you can't unless you want to work out exactly how many molecules would be in an equivalent dose between the two and then try and run that as an experiment primo is much more favoritism towards having a genomic yeah. effect because of the sky high number of molecules as on Mastron. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, close to 10% difference, I think. If you inject 100 milligrams versus 100 milligrams, it might be a 5 to 10% difference in molecules. I did a video about this, about, you know, you discount for the mm -hmm. ester, and then um, even if the concentration is the same, so everything is 100 milligrams for one milliliter, if you discount for the ester and then the molecular weight, there, there's a discrepancy of like 20% between the different steroid molecules. <laughs> between uh, testosterone, propionate, and trembolone acetate, something like that. Uh, and that's that's what a lot of people forget, you know. If you boil it down to molecule for molecule, there's a huge range. Uh, even Absolutely. if you account for the same, same amount of milligrams. And I mean, even... Uh, like that analysis with chat GPT, I asked it like molecule per molecule. It didn't say here's a hundred milligrams of Primo, here's a hundred milligrams of Mastron. I asked of the two of these, if I had a molecule, which one is creating more favorable anabolism? Do they, do they ever investigate the re um, residency time in the anabolic, uh, the androgen receptors? Not to, not to my knowledge. No. In terms of the, the time, I guess, when you look at the kinetics of what happens, it's very, very quick. Like mm -hmm. androgen binds yeah. into the androgen binding domain, the ligand binding domain, and then the chaperone pro heat shock proteins associate and it shuttled into the nucleus. Yep. Once it's in the nucleus, I think it's pretty much straight away. It finds yep. what, what it needs to do and starts. within and starts gene transcription. But how I long is that gene transcription process? Is that once or is well, that normally, multiple times? For Over each element same. to be just once. Once. So one one, one receptor rotation. complex mm -hmm. docking in and tr triggering off a tr like translation of a protein or okay. transcri and transcription and translation. And then the, the androgen is kicked off the androgen receptor? Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. So the, the, the two will dissociate and it basically leaves and goes off to be metabolized. But so, it doesn't necessarily have to be metabolized by a 3-alpha hydroxysteroid hydrogenase or another... Mm -hmm. I could technically leave the nucleus, go back and to an androgen receptor. Right. Rebind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's nothing to say that it only gets one go. It'll create a ligand uh, complex, go into the nucleus, create an effect, dissociate. And then, like you said, if it, if it doesn't leave, 
yeah, if it doesn't leave the cell into the bloodstream and arrives at the liver, it's got, it could in theory create another interaction and go back into the nucleus. 